Yeah, there's no question that society really uh, perceives African-American quarterbacks and white quarterbacks a lot differently. The media has been very desirous that a black quarterback do well. In 1933, the National Football League decided to ban black players. George Preston Marshall, owner of the Washington franchise and known segregationist, spearheaded this ban. It was rooted in widespread racist belief that blacks were inferior. Jay Coakley, a professor at the University of Colorado said, whites assumed that African Americans lacked the physical and emotional courage to excel at the sport. Though the ban was lifted in 1946, opportunities for black quarterbacks were non-existent. The lack of opportunity was far bigger than any so-called physical or emotional distinction between black and white players. In the eyes of the white organizational leaders, the good old boys, blacks were not equipped to play the position of quarterback. Somewhere along the way, the intellectual capacity of the black quarterback somehow, some way, came into question. After years of NFL owners and general managers refusing to support the drafting and playing of black quarterbacks, it leads me to question their motives. It was on full display after a top draft prospect was passed up by a number of teams in the 1978 draft. And then I spent a week at this point at Grambling in Louisiana with this kid named Doug Williams who looked like he should be a high first round draft choice. And I've said this on the show before, but I called one general manager, whose name I will not use, who said that, no, Doug Williams, he said these black kids, they, they don't have the mental capability to play quarterback in the National Football League. Doug Williams would go on to become the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl in 1988. It appeared the thought of a black man being the face of a multi-million dollar entity was bad for business. In fact, the athletic ability many of the black quarterbacks possess is often used by executives to criticize their passing ability. I feel like the QB position is the only position with two criteria, mm -hmm. right. dual threat and pro style. Right. Right. Look, there's no run, run tight end or <laughs> pass right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. one criteria, tight, tight end. And for some reason, when you're putting a dual threat, the first thing you think of is, oh, he can't throw. Dual threat quarterbacks have exploded in the NFL over the past 10 years. General managers, scouts, and executives in today's game identify the ability to run and throw as a necessity to reach an elite status. Based on that necessity, I imagine the opportunities are now endless for young black quarterbacks. Well, unfortunately not. In 2017, Mitchell Trubisky, a white quarterback, was drafted before two athletic dual threat quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Trubisky was praised for his athletic ability. Many pointed to Watson's inconsistent accuracy or Mahomes' gunslinging mentality to justify the selection. Watson led his college team to a national title, and he and Mahomes both outproduced Trubisky on every level. Another shot fired at young black players. Once again, the NFL has proved the racial divide between ownership and the quarterback position. If you're black and you're young and we take you in the first round, we're doing the same thing as if you're white and you're young and we're taking the first round. You're getting out there to play because if you can't play, I need to find out right away because if you can't play, I'm losing my job. 1,048 players have started at the quarterback position in the NFL. Only 100 were black. Of the 108 quarterbacks to start a Super Bowl, seven were black. Three went on to win the big game. In a league where black players represent 70%, the numbers are startling. The league celebrated its 100th season in 2019 by shining a spotlight on the history of the sport, recognizing many of the greats. It was only fitting that 2019 was also dubbed the year of the black quarterback. To start the season, nine of the 32 starting quarterbacks were black. Out of that group, five of them finished in the top 12 in completion, quarterback rating, and QBR four in completion percentage in yards, and six finished in the top 12 in touchdowns. The emergence of these young black stars continue to buck the industry stereotypes of playing the position. Still, owners and general managers have yet to buy into the progress. The pressure a black quarterback faces pales in comparison to that of a white player in the same position, sparking black players to feel the need to be perfect. One black player is quoted as saying, to be an average black quarterback is to be without a job. Joining the many over the years speaking out about the issue. There's always the extra that you put on it to determine if the black quarterback should continue to play. But yet there's so many excuses they make for the white quarterback to continue to play. 
I invite people to explain how Nathan Peterman, a white, unsuccessful quarterback, is still on an NFL roster while EJ Manuel can't even get a tryout. Manuel played four seasons with the Bills. He went 6-12 as a starter, threw for 3,700 yards, 20 touchdowns to 16 interceptions. Peterman has been in the league for three years with a 1-3 record, 573 yards, and only three touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Now, the outrage for Peterman is not that he continues to be given opportunities. But in fact, the black players with the same or even better production, skills, and success are not afforded those same opportunities. Perhaps the language used to describe black quarterbacks over the years is a more glaring indictment on the league's racial biases. Fake, selfish, not the brightest cookie in the world, not a student of the game, diva-like quality. The big issue is going to be precise passing. Can he put the ball in the tight windows? Can he be the type of quarterback in the NFL? If he doesn't make it a quarterback, he'll have a great fallback. But, but he has to buy in. Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, and many other black quarterbacks are referred to as great athletic quarterbacks. While Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, and other white quarterbacks who have similar skill sets and are also the best in the game are just called great. It isn't necessary to describe the black athlete as athletic. The NFL is a professional sports league, and every player who steps on the field is athletic, black or white. It is clear as we enter 2021, the constant need to denigrate black quarterbacks with unfair and unequal criticism or lack of opportunity proves the systemic racial biases set forth all those years ago is still present in today's game. For Sports Uncovered, I'm Aaron Mukes.